Hello, I am Glenn Hall and this is part three of a series of videos that I'm doing to describe the prophetic situation that we currently live in. The name of the series is A Seamless Garment, The Mystery of the Beast. Today, rather than going on with some of the... Um, with the next part of the ideas that I want to um, explain to you, I thought it would be good to give you a little bit of understanding on how to interpret the scriptures. A lot of people, I'm afraid, have not learned uh, a very important secret concerning how to read the Bible and how to understand it. I first began following the Lord in 1977. It was in that year that God revealed to me that he was the Word and that he had written his Word on paper through prophets. The Bible literally contains the Word of God. It is his Word. After that revelation, which occurred in the spring of 1977, since that time I have read the Bible almost daily. Now I want to caution you, uh, because at one time I saw that as a, a real badge of honor. Oh man, I've read the Bible every day for years and years. And it's so easy to get into pride because we think we know something about God because we think that we are somebody in God and in fact we are someone in God and he means us to be someone but he does not want us to become proud and think that we know things when we don't so about 20 years later in 1997 my whole understanding of scripture began to change the Lord took me to a few different teachers who began to explain different concepts to me, concepts that I hope to explain as I go forward in this teaching series. But they're, they're not important right now. Two years after that, in 1999, the Lord took me to a scripture and that was 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1, says this. Now concerning food offered to idols. That's how he starts. Then he says, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. And then verse 4 says, Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols. And then he goes on. <clears throat> well, isn't that interesting? He starts saying, now concerning food offered to idols, and then he talks about something totally different. And what happened was, when I read that, suddenly I had the thought, you know, I've always heard that this food offered to idols was talking about offering a literal food sacrifice to a statue, a stone idol over in uh, ancient Greece or ancient Asia Minor or something like that. And that's all I'd ever heard. And so that was my knowledge. And, you know, I thought I knew quite a few things from the scripture. And it was then, in 1999, that the Lord began to give me two books. One, the first one was called The Separation. 
And the second one was called When We Awake. The second one, When We Awake, was first entitled Food Sacrifice to Idols. And that book contains biblical teaching that I never understood at all until God began to re reveal it to me in about the year 2000. And I wrote the book in the years 2000 and 2001. And I think some in 2002. And I believe that I actually published that book in 2003. Um, I plan to put links to that book uh, and the information about this video below. The point that I want to make is that Christians are notorious for speaking as if they really know it all, that they really know what it's all about. And I have to say that over the last 20 years, 22 years now, the Lord has shown me that pretty much everything that I learned as a Christian for 20 years, from 1977 to 1997, was wrong. That most Christian doctrine was wrong and is wrong. I want to take you now so that you can understand that to Isaiah chapter 6. In Isaiah 6, Isaiah has an encounter with God. So I'm going to read the chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Do you understand? Yet, you are unclean. We are unclean. As we will progress in this teaching, we will begin to see more and more why that's the case. Verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. There is a remedy for us our uncleanness. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go. Go. Now, how many people, how many young Christians have recognized that Jesus is the Lord, that Jesus is their Savior. And then they go. And they begin to preach. And they begin to rail. And they do so usually without knowledge. Because what does God say here? He says, go and say to this people, keep on hearing but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes. Wow. Have you ever encountered a preacher before who saw his calling as making the heart of the people dull 
as making their ears heavy, as blinding their eyes, as telling them, keep on hearing but don't understand, keep on seeing but never perceive what you're seeing. And he goes on, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Wow, isn't that the whole purpose? I thought that's what we wanted to do. Well, here we are now. We're at the end of 2,000 years since Christ lived and died and was resurrected. 2,000 years. And the church is in shambles. The people of God, where do they go now when they're finding that all of their institutions are defiled, many filled with sin? Who would have ever thought that people we respected had been engaged in pedophilia, had been engaged in satanic sacrifice? We're hearing more and more of that. And it's not just limited to the Catholic Church. Who would have ever thought that the church would be in this condition at the end of 2,000 years? So then Isaiah said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. There is only a stump. Left. of the Holy Seed. The power of the Kodeshim, the power of the holy people has been utterly destroyed. This is where we are now. But now things are changing. And now the Lord is giving revelation about where we are today because things are changing now. The pedophiles are being arrested now. Who's ever heard of such a thing? Who's ever heard of someone with such political clout, <clears throat> such connections as CIA and Mossad, as Jeffrey Epstein being arrested. Who's ever heard of that? But it's happening, isn't it? Now, when I read this passage from Isaiah, did it ring any bells to you? It should have, if you're reading your Bible. Let's go to Mark 4. And let's read what Jesus says here. <clears throat> Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing, and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said... He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, if you had been there 
you were in the crowd and Jesus spoke that, would you have understood what he meant? Of course not. How could you? Going on, verse 10. And when Jesus was alone, those around him, with the twelve, so the twelve disciples and others around, asked him about the parables. Jesus, what does that mean? And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive. They may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. Wow, that was what we just read from Isaiah chapter 6. So Jesus then is quoting Isaiah 6, and he's explaining why he speaks in parables. Isn't that an interesting do you know when I was being taught by Christian leaders many years ago when I went to church, I was taught that Jesus spoke in parables in order to make the meaning of his teaching clear. That's the exact opposite of the truth. Jesus spoke in parables to hide what he was saying. No one could understand what he was saying unless he explained it to them. So, then he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Good question. How will they? So Jesus goes on. He says, The sower sows the word. And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns, they are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. You know, I've been here a long time now, and I've seen a lot of Christians. I've seen new Christians. I've seen older Christians. And I have seen all three of these. I've seen some people who don't respond at all. I've seen others who seem to be really with it at first. Man, you see them everywhere for a short time. But because there's no root in them, they endure a while and then they go away. And then the, other, the next group, the third group are the really sad ones. I've seen Christians who were in ministry for example, who then end up divorcing the wives of their youth. Christians who are in ministry who end up falling away from the faith totally, who get way more involved in making money or perhaps just unrighteous desires. And then verse 20 says, But those who were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. So, Jesus told them, It has been given to you to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But to those outside, everything is in parables so that they will not perceive, will not understand, will not turn, will not be forgiven. But then he says on to them, don't you understand the parables? So how will you ever understand all the parables? 
How will they? There's a couple more parables in this chapter of Mark. Verse 33 and 34 says this. With many such parables, <clears throat> he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. The scripture is very clear that Jesus said nothing without using a parable. He did it so that he would not be understood by the masses. And then with his disciples, it says privately, he explained everything. So the answer to the question he had to them, how then will you understand the parables? The answer is this. If Jesus tells me the answer, if Jesus explains the parable to me, then I will know. That's why for many, many years, I have prayed almost daily for ears to hear and eyes to see. For spiritual ears to hear what Jesus really says. For spiritual eyes to see what he is doing. The purpose of the parable, of Jesus using parables, was because he didn't want it to be easy. Why? Because you need to understand that it's important. This is the pearl of great price. This is the knowledge and understanding that is beyond anything of value in the world. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. So don't expect to just willy-nilly go into the Bible and think that you can understand it. Jesus has to explain it or we will never understand it. You won't understand it. I won't understand it. And so, about three years ago, I heard a prophet say that God had anointed Donald Trump to become president. I struggled with that, ultimately made my decision to vote for him and have supported him ever since. This same prophet said that Donald Trump was going to bring down the deep state. I'm not sure that he used that particular word then, but certainly began to later. And so, as things became clear about what was going on, and when I began to see the incredible hatred toward Donald Trump, and the fighting against him, the vileness directed against him, and then began to see that he really was doing things that were against the deep state interests. I 
I began to ask God, what does this mean? If Donald Trump is really destroying the deep state, this should be in Scripture. This is so big that it should be in Scripture. It was then, and that was over a year ago, that God began to reveal to me exactly what is going on. It's huge. About 11 months ago, I felt the Lord saying to me, don't publish what I'm teaching you for nine months. That nine months ended July 1st, but I didn't feel led to begin doing this until just last week. So the only reason that I know anything to talk about with regard to this is because I asked Jesus for ears to hear and eyes to see. I could never, ever have come up with the things that I'm going to be sharing with you. The purpose of the parables was to hide the truth so that those who shouldn't know wouldn't know. It, ha it was a huge surprise to the deep state and I think to Satan himself when Donald Trump won. We are living in prophetic times. Only people who will take the time to hear and see will hear and see. Pray as you listen to these videos that God will open your eyes and your ears so that you can see and hear. Because everything is in a parable. The entire Bible is a parable, an allegory. I am not saying that the things did not literally happen. They did. The Bible is historically accurate. But God had his prophets write down the stories so that they conveyed a spiritual truth as well as just a practical or historical truth. And so over the next days, weeks, perhaps months, I plan to reveal to you those parables so that you will have an understanding of where we are in history, of what is really going on right now. There's one verse I think I want to end this with, and that is in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3. So um, let me just look that up real quickly. And this is to the church of Laodicea. And this so applies to today's church that it, today's people. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, 
the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus is talking about what I have been talking about today. How do you buy from him gold refined by fire? How do you buy from him white garments? How do you buy salve? You have nothing to offer him. He doesn't want your money. He wants you. That's what you have. It's the same offer he gave to the rich young ruler. Sell everything you have and follow me. Give it up. Give it up to follow me. Only then, only then are you going to see. Only then are you going to find the gold. Don't you know you're poor, you're blind, you're naked? (coughs) How important is it? Listen to what he says next. To the one who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen.